The New York Knicks are setting up to rob the NBA yet again as Mikhail Bridges is about to become eligible for a contract extension and it appears that there's a good chance he is going to take a deal similarly to Jalen Brunson's massive pay cut and rob the NBA of their rules for the second apron by taking this pay cut and joining the wave and we're gonna break it all down what's up welcome back to Knicks Digest it's Chris here and we're gonna jump right into the video because Mikhail Bridges is about to become eligible for a contract extension in just a few weeks and it is becoming more likely that Bridges takes a big pay cut in order to stay with the Knicks and give them salary flexibility and let's take a look into it now as posting and toasting mentioned on October 1st Bridges will become eligible for a contract extension and his decision could significantly alter both his future finances and the trajectory of the New York Knicks. Bridges is entering the third year of a four-year contract extension that he signed with the Phoenix Suns for nearly $91 million, and he stands to earn $23.3 million in the 2024-25 season and right under $25 million in the 25-26 season. The contract is fully guaranteed, so there's no way of getting out of it a year early and opting out of a player option like we do see sometimes, and he will become an unrestricted free agent after the 2026 NBA season if he does not sign an extension. Now, as we know, Bridges was traded to the Nets in the Kevin Durant swap before ultimately going to the Knicks. Now, also as Sam Quinn mentioned, since being traded on July 6th when the trade officially went through, even though it was announced on June 25th at night, Bridges is subjected to the NBA's extend and trade rules, which limit his extension options for six months. Under these rules, he can only extend his contract for up to two additional years with a 20% raise in the first year and a 5% annual increase. That's in the ballpark of a two-year $61.2 million deal, which is an incredibly team-friendly contract as we know. So let's take a look because it's like, okay, I get it. That's a very cheap contract. So much that the sirens are coming out because Bridges would be underpaid if he did this. But it would also be greatly beneficial for the Knicks. But it's hard to imagine that contract just kind of thinking about it. So here we go right here. This would be Bridges' contract if he signed that extension. His First year on the two-year extension, he would be making, and I cannot read, um, <laughs> nearly $30 million before making $31.3 in, in the final of the two years and his final year before hitting unrestricted free agent in 2028 free agency. And then after that, he'd be able to sign a five-year extension with the New York Knicks for a ton of money if he so chooses, which he probably would after taking a pay cut. But there's more to that. There's a lot more to look at with the Knicks, with Mikhail Bridges, with all this. Julius Randle is also eligible for a contract extension. That probably will have some of an effect on things. We all know that the Knicks, not exactly looking to trade Julius Randle, but also it's not at the forefront right now, but either by the Knicks or by Julius to get an extension done. I think both sides kind of believe they will get it done. That's what all signs point to is that they're going to get things done. It's just going to take some time. They're going to work things out. Randall is going to want to play some of this season and show that he could stay healthy for a full year, not hinder the Knicks playoffs by being injured, which has happened now twice in a row. And I'm not hating on Randall. I'm just saying the New York Knicks will use that as a negotiation tactic against Julius to say, hey, dude, you should probably take a pay cut because the last two years we could have went to the conference finals had you been healthy. And they are just going to use that because, yeah, were they two freak injuries? Absolutely. Were they still two injuries that hindered the Knicks? Yes. And it gives the Knicks leverage. So if Julius comes back and has the best season of his career, something that I'm predicting he's going to have, considering the fact that this team is perfectly tailored for both Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle to have massive success, it really makes you wonder what's going to happen with Bridges. You can only pay so many people, and OG Ananobi decided he was not on the pay cut wave and decided to take a massive, massive contract extension because he held all the... He held all the leverage, and essentially it went that way, and now he makes 26% of the money the Knicks are allowed to pay, which at the end of the day, OG affects their winning enough to where it's fine. Some Look at the way Jaden McDaniels is paid. He's making a ton of money in Minnesota, and it's clearly helping them win. It's a similar thing in New York. OG, probably the best on-ball defender in basketball. It's between him, Herb Jones, McDaniels, and Mikael Bridges. The Knicks have two of them, which separately is going to help them win a ton of games and could probably help Mikael get some more money. But it seems as if Mikael is kind of on that contract extension pay cut wave, which we love to see. 
And as Sam Quinn mentioned, that Bridges will be working under very different circumstances once the league year flips to 2025-2026 for a number of reasons. Those extended trade limits are going to be gone. That opens up him to a typical veteran extension guideline, which allows for a 40% raise in the first new year of the deal, followed by 8% raises afterwards. Second, he'll be in the final year of his contract. That means he could extend during the 2025-26 season at any point before the spring really kicks in and the contract extension deadline is over and it also means that he can add four new years to his deal instead of two meaning he'll be locked up by the Knicks for longer he won't have to think about it at working for a contract he just gets to play for the Knicks the team that he's wanted to play for for a little bit of time now that would guarantee him around 156 million over the four years and around 181 million in total with the final years of his current contract included now this is the point where i should mention that yes mikhail bridges can certainly become an unrestricted free agent after the 2025 2026 season he gets on a five-year deal with the knicks and we're about to get into all that but something i do want to mention very quickly is the fact that mikhail bridges is not leaving the knicks he essentially told the nets hey i want to get traded and i want to get traded to the knicks and the way that i'm going to make this happen is I am going to have my agents at Excel Sports Management decide to tell you guys, if you trade me anywhere else, like Houston, where you want to move me so you can get your own draft picks back from the massive mistake that you made to trade everything for James Harden because you let Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving push you guys around a few years back, I am going to tell Houston that I'm going to leave in two years and sign with the Knicks regardless. McHale essentially forced the Nets' hand to trade him to the Knicks because he said, we're just going to tell every single team that tries to trade for me that I'm going to sign with the Knicks in 2026 anyway. I want to be on the Knicks. I'm happy in New York. My friends live here, but I want to play on the same team as them, you know, the good team with fans and all that. I want to be on that one. I don't want to be in Barclays. I don't want to be in Brooklyn with a guy who never smiles and takes 98 shots per game to only score, what, 21 points or whatever. Like, it's one of those situations where the Nets are a dumpster fire right now, and Knicks fans know how that is because that that was flipped a few years back. It wasn't that long ago where the Nets were thriving and the Knicks were a dumpster fire. But now that's not the case. Mikhail Bridges was the last kind of connected piece to that whole great error the Nets had for like five minutes. Great error. They like they were what a seventh seed twice and then a what a two seed once. Like whoa. Same thing as the Knicks in twenty in the mellow years. Same success. Great job, guys. Um, I, I just like to hit on the Nets when I get a chance. But look, the Nets games are honestly fun. I don't know why I'm hating on them so much. But um, they're not fun. I'm lying. The Barclays Center is cool, though. Um, but Mikhail Bridges is obviously a very talented player, and he wanted to go to the Knicks and force their hand. Now, if he wants to sign an extension that is not the five-year max, he can do something like this. This is the one I was talking about where it's assigned for additional years, not just two years. Makes more money that way. Makes $181 million in total. But as I said, he could wait one year and sign this extension where in the first year of his contract, he'd be making $51 million in the final year, 67. It'd be a total of basically $296 million. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money, and is Mikhail Bridges worth it? We're about to wait and see, because the Knicks just gave up all their draft picks to do so, so they clearly think he's going to be worth it, which makes me confident that Mikhail will be worth it. And Mikhail spoke out and said, I am not the player that was on the Phoenix Suns. I am better, and you guys should be happy about that. Here's the exact quote. He said, y'all should appreciate Brooklyn because it made me better. F it, my game grew there. I'm pairing up with a lot of psychos, and I'm happy to be here in New York. So Bridges giving some shouts to being a Brooklyn Nat. Clearly, Bridges also, all this being said, Bridges clearly did like his time with the Nets that year and a half. He wasn't miserable there or anything. He just wanted to be on the Knicks more because that's where his friends were, and they were good. Like, it makes sense. It's not It's not like it, it, it would be the same thing if the situations were flipped, and they were. DeAndre Jordan was on the Knicks for a minute and a half, and then KD and Kyrie went to the Nets, and DeAndre Jordan said, why would I stay on the Knicks and re-sign if I could just go across town in a city I already live in to play with my friends on a team that's going to be good? McHale's doing the same thing. It's just a different era of that. So I don't think Nets fans should be mad at McHale. I think they kind of are to some degree, but they're also happy with the trade package they got back. It's a lot of picks. I think it'll show to work out for both sides. I think the Knicks are going to be an NBA Finals contender for the next four to five years. 
Hopefully they win one. And Mikhail will obviously be a huge part of that. Last season, his defense kind of fell off because he had to run a lot of offense, but we know how great of a defender he is. He's still a top five on-ball defender in basketball. 19.6 points per game with four rebounds, three and a half assists, shot 37% from three, something that I think is going to go up now that he's going to be shooting more catch-and-shoot threes. 88% of his threes were assisted last season. I'm expecting it's going to go up to around 94, 95 on the Knicks. He's going to be more off-ball, going to be more of a defensive focus, shooting 40% on corner threes. And I also think that'll climb a little bit, maybe to the 43% range, just in the sense that, again, catch and shoot, off-ball. Mikhail Bridges, phenomenal corner shooter as it is. It's just when you're creating your own shot, your percentage is going to be lower, and that's just how uh, shot creation works. Now, shoots only 45% of his shots from beyond the arc. I also think that's going to grow. He's just going to be a more efficient player on New York, who's also one one of the best defenders in basketball, and I do think it's going to work out very well for the Knicks, and I cannot wait to watch it. We are very close to the NBA season. Media Day, or, well, Content Creation Day, as it's now called, Welcome to the New World, is very, very close to us. On top of that, preseason is around a month away. NBA season starts October 22nd, so 50 days, 40 days, guys. We are closing in. I cannot wait. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like this video, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Go next.